don't spend a single dollar on armaments or inscriptions in rise of kingdoms until you finish watching this video every time that lilith implements a new system into rise of kingdoms you guys can trust that i'm gonna be there to give you guys the truth i'm just gonna call it how it is okay so today let's go over the formation system this system came into the game a few days ago i've had a little bit of time to go over everything and understand it really well and i thought it would be a good idea to structure this video in three parts first First, we're going to go over the good we're going to go over the good things about the formation armament and inscription system i'm going to start with the good first because every time i make a video that's critical about rise of kingdoms i always have a handful of mouth breathers in the comment section below who basically are dick riding every single thing that lilith does and thinks that every time i'm being critical about lilith that it's inherently a bad thing guys trust me i like this game more than you i promise 1527 login days on top of the fact that i've spent hundreds if not thousands of hours making videos about it but that doesn't mean that i can't be critical about something that i'm passionate about so we're gonna go over the good stuff first then we'll talk about some of the bad things we're gonna talk about the things about the system that i don't really like the, the problems that are in the system and then the final part of the video is gonna be the ugly it's gonna be the red pill base take truth behind this entire system in rise of kingdoms and i think a lot of you guys are going to want to see that and at least understand what this system is all about now this might be a long video of me people talking so make sure you go grab a drink or a snack and click the like button real quick it really helps me out a ton cheers we gave up on water it's back to coffee okay so i think the first good thing about the armament system here is that the different stats on these armaments are pretty random the the range is pretty large and you can get a bunch of really good stats or you can get a bunch of absolute garbage on here and again if we open up this formation choice chest for example we're gonna pick wedge because that's what everybody knows is the best open field option right now you hit confirm and boom we got something legendary and it looks like okay it's mostly garbage okay this is pretty much trash the reason that this is actually a good thing is because it guarantees that whales can't just buy their way to the top and get the best of the best within a week or two and all of a sudden they have this massive advantage really really quickly so as you can see here even though this is a legendary armament it's basically garbage so what i've seen and i've seen this from other content creators and people who are buying these bundles is that they buy the 35 dollars worth of the bundle every single day and they get a bunch of legendary trash like this it's basically like lighting your money on fire and i think for a lot of people at least at the very beginning they see this randomness as a good thing now on the flip side if you're a free to play player you could get really lucky with this and then now you have a really powerful armament that at least helps you compete a little bit with the whales just because of a little bit of luck and not because you actually spent any money and i think any system that gives free to play players the chance to get something decent or as good as whales is solid now there are also some really big problems with it being random obviously and we're going to talk about that later in the video but i think at the very beginning the massive amount of randomness and the absolute gargantuan pile of garbage that you're going to be getting even by buying these things uh is generally a good thing because it's going to slow down how quickly the gap between free to play and play uh, pay to win forms right it's obviously there's obviously going to be a gap there but that gap will widen slowly because the whales don't have a choice to just pick the best things right away now if that wasn't random enough for you the other good thing about this is that on top of the stats there are also inscriptions so it could even be the case where you get a pretty good armament and your inscription is bad like for this one for example troop attack by two and a half percent it's better than not having an inscription at all but there's over a hundred of these inscriptions and so even if you are able to optimize all the stats for all your armies your inscriptions could be trash and so again the free to play could have a, a similar attribute breakdown but a really good inscription and maybe if they get lucky with a single march they might be able to still compete another good thing about the armament system is that you can actually recycle all the useless trash that you get from this system and you get some sort of currency here so here if i recycle this northern armament i'm going to get four of the silver coins and if you go over to your courier station you can exchange the silver coins for 
either a formation choice chest obviously the purple are going to be better or you can go ahead and get sage's testimony which i'm going to talk about a little bit later in this video but the fact that you can actually get some small amount of value out of the garbage that you will inevitably get from this system means that you can at least uh, you know sort of focus in on things that you really care about so in the formation choice chests obviously you don't get to pick which armament you get but you at least can guarantee that you're going to get it for the formation that you care most about and i think that that is pretty good having a recycle system built in right away is nice this is similar to the equipment system where you can dismantle pieces and actually get back your material so it's sort of like that except you get a universal currency and there's just more randomness involved but in general again recycling good another good thing about the armament system is that lilith is adding new ways that you can actually gain specific inscriptions so this removes a little bit of that randomness as well which lets you focus in on specific armaments for your formations uh if we take a look at this mail that was sent out by the devs they basically said that they're adding a new autark reward system basically in kvk if you capture the great zig and you continue to hold your own crusader fortress you'll become the autark uh, alliance and basically you can choose some of your coalition alliances to gain access to an autark limited item shop which is going to give you some apparently really good things for inscriptions so there will be a way moving forward to gain pretty good inscriptions even as free to play assuming that you're in a powerful alliance that is doing well in kvk if you're not in a good alliance that does well in kvk then this is an even more even more of a reason for you to migrate to a better kingdom additionally and this wasn't i don't think this was listed here at all but for the season of conquest moving forward if you control the great zig and have a certain number of severely wounded then you are able to get another uh, inscription chest they're going to change i believe it's this last one standing crusader achievement where you're going to be able to get some inscriptions from just participating in kvk as well so this is another good thing about the system is a, it's a way for you to actually hone down and actually get some more really good stuff that you don't actually have to pay for another good thing about the formation system is that this is a new system for you to progress in so for a lot of people who were getting a little bit bored of rise of kingdoms maybe they had a good handful of commanders and they had some decent gear on there they kind of felt like they were stagnant like they weren't really making much progress well great news this is a new system that you can basically collect armaments or your different formations and the way that i look at it is it's kind of like uh opening packs of cards if you've ever played pokemon cards or Yu-Gi-Oh or magic the gathering getting a new armament is like opening a pack of cards that has three different cards it's either you know good stats or bad stats just like you open a pack of cards you either get good cards or bad cards uh, and so it's just another system where you can collect new things for your armies and i think you know as a progression system i think a lot of people are going to like that it's going to be fun to just see you know which armaments you get which buffs that you get and see the you know the power that you're going to gain from this system even if you're not paying any money over time you're going to get a bunch of these different armaments from dispatch and it's just something new and fresh to do within the game and the last thing that i want to mention for the good parts about this system is that this is basically you know a free way for free to play players to gain more stats for their armies which is going to help them maybe not necessarily in pvp but it will definitely help them in a lot of really challenging pve scenarios that maybe they couldn't really do that well in before four so for example the trial of Kokarok this event might actually be a little bit easier for free-to-play players now that they actually will have some more stats on their army so in a few weeks I think you'll be able to get for free on one or two armies you'll have maybe eight or twelve percent of extra stats for these different armies even if you're not spending any money and I think those extra couple percentage of stat points is going to really help for events not only like this but events like the golden kingdom but also for things like arms master lohar defending yourself during the shadow legion event and even just in kvk having better and longer barb chains and also being able to help take down some of the higher level barb forts as a free-to-play player all of this pve content is going to be maybe slightly easier for free-to-play players in just a few weeks by adding this system now this there's a caveat to this and that is assuming that Lilith isn't going to actually make these events harder to compensate for the introduction of this new system. Obviously, they've been adding the legend difficulty to a lot of these different events already. So it is possible that, you know, they are increasing the difficulty as a response to this new formation system coming into the game, which kind of puts free to play back to where they were before. But regardless, I would still say for things like barbs and 
trial of kokarok and barb forts it's gonna just be nice to have a few extra free stats okay that's it for all the good stuff let's start to talk about some of the bad stuff well the first thing that i want to talk about is that obviously this is a very random system and while that is good at the beginning when this system first comes out that means free to play players who get lucky they could actually perform pretty well the bad part about this system is that free to play players are only going to have access to a certain number of armaments that they can obtain every single day or every single week. Whereas for people who are paying low spenders, mid spenders, and even the high spending whales are going to be able to buy the triumvirate treasures bundle every single day. It's up to $35 and you're going to get a certain number of the formation choice chests. Now, again, a lot of this stuff is going to be garbage inside of these chests, which is why I don't recommend spending money here, at least not for right now. But if you remember my example of trading cards, okay, every single time you open these formation choice chests, it's like opening a pack of cards. And as a free to play player, again, you could get lucky. But if you look at the law of averages over time, let's say a free to play player only gets their hands on like five different armaments per day. Plus they get their hands on two of the choice chests every single week. That's 37 different armaments per week. Whereas if a whale buys this bundle every day, they'll probably get that same amount in two or three days. And similar to the Pokemon card or Yu-Gi-Oh card example, if you get 10 packs of cards and your friend gets 30 packs of cards, sure you could get lucky but over time the person who opens more packs is going to have the higher chance of getting something good and this is going to continue on into perpetuity so one year from now it's pretty much guaranteed that all the whales are going to have really good armaments and inscriptions and the free to play are still going to be chugging along so whereas if you got lucky at the beginning you may have a slight advantage but in a year i can guarantee you that you're going to be way far behind all of the whales the other thing that really sucks about this new system is that you have to upgrade the state forum with fucking gems lilith this is actually just insulting this is absolutely ridiculous the fact that you have to spend gems on the sage's testimony now i know you can get these for free okay you can get them through dispatches or you can get them through the courier station you can exchange your hard-earned silver coins for one sage's testimony each and you can only get 20 per week okay and i'm only at level 13 and it takes 205 okay so yes there's a free to play way to get these but in reality okay if you're ever gonna max this building you're gonna do it for for gems okay now i know you don't necessarily need to max the state form i get that okay i know that that that's great but if you do max it you actually will get a better pool of dispatch rewards and what do i mean by this well when it hits level 25 you are no longer going to see the sage testimony pop up in the dispatch as an option so for example this food and this wood these are useless dispatches these are worthless you were never going to trade four hours of time for 50,000 food it makes absolutely no sense to do that and in the same way if you know if a sage's testimony popped up here that kind of sucks because you'd rather just get a really good armament so there are benefits to maxing out this building but the fact that you need to use gems for this is just ridiculous it makes absolutely no sense we didn't have to do this for the blacksmith mind you when the blacksmith came into the game it brought along the equipment system and we just got access to it right away you could just start to forge things and that was really good the fact that we have to spend gems to build this building up to 25 is it, it's honestly one of the parts about this system that i hate the most i hate the fact that i have to use gems for this and i'm somebody who actually spends money in this game a free-to-play player does not have spare gems laying around okay free-to-play players are saving up their gems for the wheel of fortune to get good commanders or they're saving it for the egg event so they can get their hands on a couple of good pieces of equipment they should not be spending gems just to upgrade their state forum but if they don't get it to at least a certain level they're not going to be able to compete in six to 12 months with all the whales who do have this maxed out okay so again the the, the system itself is already from the ground up built for people who are willing to spend money on a dice roll that's what this is this is a lottery system for people who are willing to spend money but you can't even get to that point without spending money to you have to spend money to spend money like there's no way around it this part is bullshit there's just there's nothing good about the fact that you have to level this up it's only bullshit no one's happy about this I, I I actually can't even believe that they did this they not only implemented a pay to win system but you have to pay to use the pay to win system even more effectively <laughs> 
complete trash complete trash I, I think honestly Lilith should just remove this it should not have a level system and anybody who spent any amount of gems on Sage's testimony should just get that number of gems back and credited to their account because this is a massive barrier to entry for any player that is hoping to at least use this system even a little bit tens of thousands of gems just to just to participate in another pay to win system it's it's absolutely ridiculous and the last bad thing I want to talk about for the formation system is that it is in itself another system in rise of kingdoms as if we really needed another system in the game the more things that there are to spend money on it will inevitably lead to a larger gap between free to play and pay to win even if you're lucky it doesn't even matter and on top of that it's just confusing I know that there's a lot of people right now who aren't even interested I mean look at this look at all these different stats over here a new player doesn't even they, they barely know that the you know the secondary commander's talents don't do anything right like there's so much for a new player to learn about rise of kingdoms that when they get to season of conquest or, or even in kvk2 they're gonna have access to the formation system it's yet another thing to understand they have to figure out which formations to pick what the different rarities are between everything and the randomness and the inscriptions on top of that they still have to figure out like talenting gear and adding iconic crystals and the fact that iconic crystals give you base stats and not percentage stats plus the best commander pairings between all that like, th there's so much to learn uh, that it's just it's just genuinely confusing for new players it it just is and the worst thing for a game like rise of kingdoms is to make it harder for new players to join i mean that's really it the more systems you have in the game the more confusing it is to new players and the more confusing it is the less likely you're gonna get they're gonna keep playing and a lack of new players is what kills games right you have to be able to replace all the people that are quitting the game and let me tell you there's a lot of people quitting rise of kingdoms now there's a lot of people joining the game as well but again the more confusing it is it's just gonna turn people away i've been playing this game for years and even for me it took me a while to just remember all of the different terminology for the system it's the formation system that and each formation there's seven formations they each have four different armaments okay and each armament has three different stats on there plus if it's epic or legendary it can have an inscription and there's a hundred different inscriptions right it's just it's a there's so much more terminology here and it's just confusing okay it's simply confusing it's not rocket science but again if you download a mobile game for the first time how long do you really play it 10 minutes five minutes Maybe if you're lucky you play it the next day you're not going to spend 20 minutes learning all this bullshit. you're not you're just going to delete the game you're going to play something else okay now let's talk about the ugly let's talk about the actual truth behind this system and what this system is going to do to the game moving forward and these i think are the biggest things the first thing is that a whale's usefulness in a kingdom is now reliant on rng randomness let's say in your kingdom you're a whale and you are a top choice for leading rallies if you if there's something that needs to be rallied you're one of the few people that your kingdom can call on to know that they can get a good trade well great news in six to 12 months you have to guarantee somehow that through buying bundles your randomness is going to continue to give you good stats for the formation that you need for rallies for the specific troop type that you need and a good inscription on top of that right so not only is this a new system that you have to invest in your usefulness is not in your control anymore you cannot control necessarily at least at the time of recording this what inscriptions that you actually get or what attributes you get for what armament all that you can control is when you open up these chests here you can control which formation you pick but everything else after that is completely random so now in six to 12 months even if you're a whale even if you're buying the bundles if you have bad luck well you might not be a top choice for a rally anymore because somebody else in your kingdom has similar stats and similar commanders and gear but they did get lucky with their formation choice chests and there's nothing that a whale hates more than to spend thousands of dollars on a game only to have no control over whether they can play the game in the way that they want to play it or not and this system is here to stay so let's say you spent ten thousand dollars on rise of kingdoms and you refuse to participate in this system because it's too random well great news you're no longer meta you are no longer going to lead rallies you are no longer going to lead garrisons you're either going to be a subpar field fighter or you're going to quit the game and lose out on the ten thousand dollars that you've spent on the game and that's that and again there's nothing that whales hate more than not being in control over whether or not they are effective 
in rise of kingdoms that's supposed to be the whole point of spending money is you spend money to get ahead of other players but if you're not getting ahead you're just buy you're basically buying lottery tickets again it's the pack of cards example you're buying packs of cards and if you keep pulling trash well great news you can keep spending but you might keep pulling trash and that just means that you're you're not going to be able to keep up and historically this system is really bad for video games this there's this is not something new okay if we want to simplify this in an example if you look at a game like world of warcraft there have been multiple expansions like in legion or battle for azeroth where sometimes you'll get a really good piece of gear to drop but the random stats that you get on that piece that are completely out of your control are not meta they're not the best in slot and therefore you've wasted your time doing different dungeons and raids just to not get the piece that you want even though it's the right piece of gear it's not the right stats for that piece okay and there's no wonder why the popularity of world of warcraft has declined over the past five years substantially by the way it's because of random systems like this random systems like this have historically been proven to kill players motivation to work towards the end game right i have very little motivation to work towards something that i have no control over i have to spend time and money to get an, an armament and i have no control over that outcome and after you lose and lose and lose and you open up those boxes over and over and over again you pop open these formation choice chests and it's loss 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 garbage garbage garbage, garbage. how long are you going to do that before you just quit and, and this is what's going to happen inevitably to many whales in rise of kingdoms uh either that or they're just not going to spend money on this stuff they're just they're just not going to do it and if whales aren't spending in this game then rise of kingdoms has less money to spend on marketing they have less reach and they're going to get less players and that's not good for the future of the game another really ugly part about this system is that there's over 100 inscriptions okay and some of the inscriptions are simple like troop attack other inscriptions give you like a 10 percent chance to reduce enemy rage by whatever and boys do you think lilith is going to be able to balance a hundred different inscriptions across 70 over 80 different commanders in the game on top of all the different gear absolutely not absolutely not there are going to be a small handful of inscriptions in this game for your armaments that will be meta it will be a very small handful and it goes back to my first point where if you don't have those inscriptions even if you have good attributes then gg you don't have best in slot you're not a rally lead you're not a garrison lead now okay let's assume that moving forward lilith adds more ways for you to get coins they give you more control over the outcome of these armaments and the attributes that they give you okay let's assume that that's true and let's assume that as a free-to-play player you get really lucky let's say you get a full set of armaments for the specific formation that you care about and some of them have good inscriptions and you're feeling good about yourself you're still gonna lose to whales because kvk tech is still in the game that's the reality of this is that no matter how lucky you get with your formations and armaments and inscriptions you were you will not have access to the best things at the at the end of the kvk tech i don't care how lucky you get with your inscriptions and your armaments you're not going to be dealing 10 percent more damage and you're not going to have seven different armies in the open field swarming you down okay so it's almost like it's futile whether you're lucky or not as a free-to-play player with armaments you don't have access to this system and on top of that you're not going to have access to as many iconic crystal pieces of equipment in the game and iconic crystals make a really big deal okay free to play players are going to be using builds that are similar to maybe something like this where it's a majority of purple and one or two legendary pieces now i got really lucky with these being talented but in general they're not going to be okay they're not going to be talented they might even look something like this where it's just nothing's talented so again in a world where you're free to play and you get really lucky with your armaments if if you go up against a whale whose armaments are maybe half as good but they have full kvk tech and all their gear has iconic crystals in them they're just going to have more base stats than you so even if it's multiplied by a smaller percentage because they didn't get as lucky with their armaments they're still gonna have higher stats than you because they have more iconic crystals and they have more access to gear that can get iconic crystals so even in the best case scenario for free-to-play players there's still two other systems in the game that whales are going to outclass you on and we're not even talking about commanders we're not even talking about the fact that whales can have five different marches of meta commanders and you're free to play and you might only have one or two so getting lucky with armaments as free to play is kind of not even a valid point because you're still not going to win <laughs> and the final thing i want to say about the formation system and this is just 
this is the red pill truth okay is that this system does not add new content to rise of kingdoms this does not fundamentally change which armies i use this does not fundamentally change my open field strategy this does not fundamentally change how an alliance will rally something versus garrison something versus build in a certain direction with their flags this changes nothing about how the game actually functions yes they added range whoop de doo this was already in the game in a specific kvk format there is nothing new there is no new content from the formation system rise of kingdoms as a game with formations in it will be played in the exact same way as rise of kingdoms without the formation system all that this is is another system for people to spend money on that's all that this is this is clearly a cash grab from lilith in an attempt to get whales to spend more money on something that is completely random it's essentially just a worst version of the equipment system because you have to level up the building and you have basically no control over the outcome of your armaments and the worst part about this is that you can't even choose to not participate in this system you can't migrate back to kvk2 to avoid it because it's in kvk2 as well and if you choose not to buy these bundles as a whale well then great news the five figures that you've already spent on this game is going to be basically useless by this time next year if you don't try to keep up and even if you do great news you could get unlucky and in a world where this system doesn't fundamentally change anything it doesn't add a new layer of strategy I mean the formations we already know that the that there's one formation that's better than the rest wedge formations better period that there's no there are so few reasons to ever use any of the other formations there's no added skill here there's no added strategy it's all randomness and it comes down to your armament so this system again it doesn't actually add anything new other than pieces other than new pixels to collect I'm going to be running the same commander pairs with the same troop types with the same open field strategy the game is identical to how it was six months ago except now you have to spend money on this as a whale if you want to keep up and if you don't then GG that's it it's just another pay to win system and the game would be better off without it and I would almost be willing to accept this armament and formation system if they removed crystal technology because crystal technology is literally throwing your money in the garbage because after a kvk it gets reset at least with armaments you actually get to keep them if you spend money on them whereas crystal tech is not the case but so long as crystal tech is in the game there's just no way that a free-to-play player is going to keep up even if they get lucky with armaments but crystal tech wasn't enough for lilith they made over two billion dollars last year and yet here we are with another super random system in the game that literally does nothing but force you to spend more money if you are a whale the game would be objectively better off without it guys if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it if you're new here subscribe to the channel and consider clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on the formation system i would love to hear from you guys down there and what you guys think so far but with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace